In today's episode, I'll conquer all of Germany with these peace-loving Czechs, and I hope to do it before the year 1500. That means I have only about 56 years to grab one, two, three, a bunch of provinces. That's the whole northern and southern Germany area. So, I'll have to lead super intense takeovers with the Czechs, and this might make all these countries team up against us. Then, our armies will have to fight a bunch of unnecessary battles. Greetings, Imperialist Lucas here. We'll kick off the Czech campaign with some standard preparations. In a quick overview, here are the crucial privileges for the social classes. We need religious diplomats and space for religious fanatics. For the merchant class, we reserve a spot for prestige. Now, let's talk about the key allies, starting with the Duchy of Burgundy, as I hope to get their entire territory for free. Only the ruler must die quickly and well, his successor too at the right moment. Alliance with Poland, we need both the Polish and Lithuanian armies and an alliance with the Green Devil. Just wondering whom I need to offend for that alliance. Conveniently, the Austrian Emperor fits the bill. Also, I believe Wien must be destroyed. Choosing rivals up front, though it doesn't matter much because, well, everyone loves me, Austria, Denmark and Hungary. The rivals are set, hiring two advisors at court immediately and the third one for diplomacy. I need to find. These ones don't fit, tolerating heretics in our country as we have some Hussites and we're Catholics. Sealing a royal marriage with Burgundy and the same with Poland. Alliance between Brandenburg and Saxony? How did that happen? Well, it's all good. All right, the easy stuff is done. Now, it gets tougher because we need to destroy the Holy Roman Empire of the German nation as quickly as possible. Probably the first time I pronounced that correctly. To do that, we must click this button, and to click it, we must occupy all eight capitals. Though not necessarily, as these capitals belong to electors, and one of those electors is me. Electors are states that choose this emperor, currently Austria. Besides, they can be my allies, and then I won't have to conquer their capitals. Sometimes, unfortunately, electors hate each other, and that might be a problem. But not for our strong diplomacy because we've got them all on our side. However, maintaining so many alliances is a significant effort for the Czech state. But remember, no family ties. After all, soon we'll be conquering all these countries. I could already attack Austria. Unfortunately, the emperor seems to have anticipated our moves and forged very strong alliances. Therefore, not declaring war on Austria. I'll focus on convincing my two biggest allies to support us in this war. I need the armies of the Poles and the Burgundians. Sad news reached us. My ruler died, and now the nobility will choose a new king. Erect. Elect. Our nobles can choose one of several rulers thanks to the special form of governance that we Czechs have, the Czech elective monarchy. I support Jan, he's the best. Spoiler, he won't last long. Meanwhile, the Burgundian ruler is still alive, unfortunately. Since we're rivals with the Danes on the international stage, Sweden asked for our support in their independence, but I'm ignoring them. Poland made an important decision and formed a union with Lithuania, which is very good for us as war approaches. You know, to conduct a war, you need three things. Money, money, and more money. Luckily, the Czechs can literally extract money from the ground in this province. We have a gold mine, so we want to develop it as effectively as possible up to the 10th level of extraction. No more, as then there's a greater chance that the mine Mine will collapse. Excellent! I've been looking for a good diplomatic advisor and we got Barbara from Chile. She works for half price, which doesn't necessarily bode well for her negotiating skills. After three years of diplomatic efforts, we managed to secure the Ottoman Empire as a Czech ally. Oh no, terrible news reached us. Despite attempts to introduce religious peace between the Hussites and Catholics, it didn't work out. Even though we tried, Jerzy from Pedobrads, the leader of the Hussite faction, gathered an army and is now marching on Prague, our capital. He intends to become the king of Czechs and provide religious freedom to Hussite followers. And for the purposes of our campaign, we'll embrace Hussitism as the main religion of our country. And Jersey will be our king. For literally two seconds because I can choose a better ruler at the assembly. Sorry Jersey, you won't be our king. <coughs> The faith switch upset the electors a bit. But for now, while they're still supporting us, we'll fulfill our imperial ambitions. Oh no, our alliances are in jeopardy. We'll have to make some tough decisions, like forming family ties with Saxony. The rest of the diplomats will now go one by one to the remaining electors to improve their opinions of us. Now that Hussitism is the official faith of our country, we need to convert all provinces one by one to this one true faith. And it's best to start with our gold mine because 
you know, gold will then be holier. Meanwhile, changing the actions of our court to focus on diplomatic efforts. Thanks to our spies, we're asserting a claim to one of the Austrian provinces that border us. Basically, we're almost ready to strike Austria, but we need to wait one more year, developing our military technology so that our clubs will be larger, paying for the army, paying for forts, recruiting additional infantry regiments, up to the limit our country can sustain, hiring commanders for our troops. They're not too impressive, but they'll do. And so, prepared, we'll commence the war for up their ends. Freedom. With the help of our two allies, we even the odds. We're attacking. Let's gather our army in one place because, as you know, strength lies in unity. Our initial strike will be on Trenksen, where there's another gold mine I want to capture. I also want to give my allies a chance to shine. They can lay siege to the forts we need to conquer and fight battles we don't have to. Yes, let's use allies to the fullest. After capturing the mountain forts, Hungary practically lies open before us. I occupy most of Hungary. However, I can't revel in this success because I need to move my forces to Burgundy. Because let's say I'm losing here and quite badly so the Duke of Burgundy finally dies. A great success. Now we need any successor to appear here. Then Charles can also pass away. The Czech army arrives and everyone flees. Literally everyone flees before me. They fear my superior clubs from technology. We attack the imperial forces near Nivarnes. Nevers. We give them a significant thrashing. They stand no chance against us. Now back to Hungary. Seems like some secret information leaked, but who cares? What matters is that we destroy part of the Hungarian army near Glogo. Only a part. Good Lithuania, destroy the Hungarian forces, destroy them! We seem to be winning, but we incur about one-third larger losses than the enemy. Finally, the Neapolitan Aragonese Union is dissolved. This means I can conduct separate diplomacy with that country. We just need to capture their capital. But first, let's capture and burn the fort in Croatia. No castle tours. After roughly two years of war, Hungary is under almost complete occupation. So we sign a very favorable peace treaty with them. We gained the richer part of Slovakia. But most importantly, we compelled this country to submit to our power on the international stage. Without Hungary, forces are surprisingly evenly matched. Only those losses. As the Czechs have already made their initial conquests, some German countries may already feel somewhat threatened by us. So I sent my merchants to the main German trade centers. Let them influence the improvement of opinions about the Czechs there. Thanks to this, whatever wrongs we did will be forgotten in a few years. Who are these opponents left to me but as they are the red ones on the map? Good job, Poles. Good. Vienna is about to fall. Just like, for some reason, the will to fight of the Kingdom of Aragon. So I make a white peace with them. I don't want anything from them. Well, maybe Maybe not entirely. Most of these armies are Austrian after all. Well, then the emperor is much stronger than I thought. Finally, Vienna falls thanks to the Poles. And with that, we can dissolve the Holy Roman Empire. Literally, this is its end. When I'll click that button, frankly, we have no reason to wait for it. With the fall of Vienna, Archduke Frederick III had to reconcile with the final defeat by the Czech forces. In the year 1453, the once prestigious Archduke signed an abdication from the throne of the Holy Roman Empire. He released all imperial states and officials from oaths and obligations to the empire. Freedom regained. I have very little prestige on the international stage. And now, I have much more of it. <coughs> Alright, now that we've dissolved the empire, it marks the beginning of a short era of constant wars among these German states. Thanks to that, they'll be easier targets for us. Another significant matter is that they won't react as negatively to our conquests as before. In short, without the empire, I can simply conquer more before these countries form coalitions against my power. And honestly, I don't need most of my allies anymore, so let's start dissolving alliances one by one. My former allies may feel used. By the way, Hungary seems to be experiencing a total collapse, as even Serbia is conquering them at this point. Another two years passed and Austria is essentially fighting alone. But look at the beating they gave us. Our losses are twice as much. Now, all that's left is to take the last forts. Frankly, I need to prolong this war for another two years, and time is slipping away quite rapidly. I have 45 years left to conquer, a substantial amount of territory. In the meantime, we're reforming privileges for the nobility and I'll be collecting more taxes from them. After all, someone 
someone has to pay for this army. The last fortress fell, which is somewhat unfortunate. We're developing our administration. However, this will allow me to expand our country in terms of espionage activities. I hope to develop propaganda further, because then all countries should react better to our conquests. The list of countries that would potentially form a coalition against me is really long. Still, after developing propaganda, it has significantly shortened. I would like to justify our wars, but unfortunately, not this time. We take a really powerful piece of land from the former Austrian emperor because there's a gold mine here. Additionally, this gold mine counts double. It must be admitted that this war was very bloody, mostly for my allies. And on the occasion of this magnificent victory, a tournament has begun. Now we have quite a few things to do before we push forward with conquests. First, I'll try to acquire the Renaissance institution from our Italian neighbors. Also, I need to keep my fingers crossed for the Burgundian Duke to kick the bucket as soon as possible. Then I get all that territory or Genoa. I don't like that. Another matter is swapping our advisors. We need a religious fanatic to effectively spread Hussitism in our provinces. Next, Czechia is turning pacifist at the moment. We no longer support war, at least for a while. We have an advisor improving our relations. Our prestige is very high on the international stage and essentially my diplomats are now 100% more efficient. Because of this, in about four years, Brandenburg will likely forget about anything we conquered here, introducing a privilege for religious fanatics in our army. Yes, yes, I forgot about that. Lowering autonomy in the conquered territories because we want our firm rule to prevail there. Tempting opportunities arise with the emergence of Nitra and Transylvania. It would be nice to capture them, but it's not my goal. It's time to annex our Silesian vassals. Oh no, the Austro-Hungarian Union happened. I foresee a bright future for them, especially since Vienna is about to fall again. Meanwhile, in the north, the Teutonic Order has conquered Brandenburg. Maybe I can exploit that later. Our Inquisitor is remarkably successful in converting the country to Hussitism. For those interested, a very powerful Serbia has just emerged. We can afford some minor wars with weaker duchies, so I'll send diplomats to prepare territorial claims, and if I have time left, I need to improve relations with France, Spain, and other European powers. Should we care about Italy, if at all, only Venice? For some reason, Venice doesn't like me, and time is ticking away. I have 40 years left. Looks like I've secured most of the gold mines in Europe. Let's start occupying smaller duchies like the Three Leagues Republic. We just need to temporarily overcome Czech pacifism. We're not pacifists anymore. Declare war. And we're pacifists again. I'm gradually upgrading all my gold mines to level 10. I can now introduce the Renaissance institution in my country. We're enlightened, beautifully. Our territories have expanded into Silesian provinces. We accept Austrian culture in our country. Oh, I discovered crystals. An opportunity presents itself. I'm attacking Brandenburg with the Poles and intend to vassalize it. Saxony and Thuringia will also face consequences. In the south, I'm conquering the Swiss again. Proclaim ourselves defenders of the Hussite faith. Yes, we're the only Hussite country in the world. One significant drawback of our country is that our mission tree is oriented towards being the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. And I've dismantled that empire, so I don't have much to gain from it, unless I go for the conquest of Poland and Hungary. But that's for later. We've achieved such splendor globally that our wars are now entirely justified. Now we have this cool Czech snake here, but at least we've separated part of Germany from those nasty Italians. And I've made a bit of a mess again. It seems that to conclude our Austrian matter, which I must do quickly, a war with Venice awaits me. And they are currently a very strong and wealthy country. And it worked. I've finally initiated a golden age in my country country. Granted, it's for 50 years, but better now than later. Oh, a center for conversion. This is what we've been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. At this moment, the Burgundian succession is happening, and it happened. Burgundy is now a dependent state, so we'll heavily rely on their army. But it officially makes France hate me. It even makes me a bit sad. Oh well, they don't have Napoleon, so there's nothing to fear. The only thing I fear is the passage of time, and I still have three years of peace with Austria, and I must conquer that country. Meanwhile, let our diplomacy create a spy network in France. The higher it is, the more France will ignore our conquest. To not waste time, I reclaim several provinces for Brandenburg. I also gain something for myself. I consistently have bad luck with my military commanders. I can't scratch that. I can train very skilled commanders for fort sieges. Sure, blame the king for everything, as it's my fault. Austria lost Venetian guarantees. Great. So I immediately attack it 
as soon as our peace period ends. Where is their army? Ah, they've hidden it here. Good, good. And now they have no army. What are Danish armies doing here? We need to intensify our administrative efforts because we'll be rapidly expanding our borders now. We can also implement several bureaucratic reforms and focus on improving the feudal system. This allows us to levy 50% higher taxes on our peasants. And we're the first in the world to invent great cannons. Well, slightly smaller ones. Truly, we were the first to discover artillery, and time is slipping away. After conquering Austria, the Austrian population increases. Odd, isn't it? We've already captured 47 provinces? Surprisingly few. Someone offended our king. However, he made a gesture that pleased all our neighbors. Since we're conducting main military operations in southern Germany, let's try to peacefully acquire some northern German duchies for our vassals. To achieve this, I'll have to perform many actions simultaneously. I'm also making Austrian culture the dominant culture in our country. This allows us to restore the Austrian archduchy. Not that the national abilities of the Czechs are weak, but they are less useful than the Austrian ones. Mainly due to the power of our diplomacy, our culture is now closer to that of the territories we'll be conquering, unlike before, when we were closer to the Poles. And we now have access to very useful Austrian missions, which I have blocked because the empire collapsed. Oh well. But perhaps someday I'll go for colonies. No one expected Austria's return, but now our diplomats are working exceptionally effectively. Essentially, every 10 years, everything bad we do is forgiven. Except that it ends my alliance with the Ottoman Empire. We're historical rivals. These Czech lands present themselves quite nicely. I had a bad dream where I lost my alliance with the Ottoman Empire. Fortunately, it didn't come true. And it will be beneficial because the number of Czech enemies is increasing internationally. Totally don't understand that. Just look into these eyes. Okay, so I won't wait any longer. Let's start the conquest. Maybe I'll activate Fort Maintenance. There you go, our spy network has been maximized. With all the countries we're not conquering, I only make white peace. To attack them in five years. Time is slipping away, but as you can see, I've stepped up the game because I'm at war with Venice, at war with Lubeck, soon we'll attack the Danes. These are the most challenging countries left for us to defeat. That moment when your allies are in a mutual war. So I won't wait for Polish support and attack Denmark. Oops, a coalition is forming. But for now, it doesn't look impressive. First, I quickly destroy the Danish army with my armies. Then we have an expedition around through Livonia, through Moscow, to occupy Sweden and Norway. We have no chance of capturing the Danish capital. Success, we've liberated many territories, including Holstein, which will now be my vassal. I still lack a considerable number of provinces, and I have about 12 years left. Honestly, I'm starting to doubt whether I can conquer the rest of these territories. I'm conquering much slower than expected. Nevertheless, we persist. I won't surrender. Thus, my first move is to dismantle the coalition formed against me. All it took was forging an alliance with the Spanish. I also double-checked the border provinces I might have missed, and yes, regrettably, I missed one. Unfortunately, this triggers a war with France. We kick off by striking straight at Paris, because if anything poses a threat to me, it's the French military. As as you can see, after several victorious battles, we're essentially besieging every fortress in the north. The French have proven quite useful in this war for me, as I'm raking in a significant amount of money and war reparations from them. Without France, Subodia practically capitulate right away. With only nine years left, I need to do something incredibly bold. Should I wait for the end of the Ottoman-Venetian War? I wasted a year. Okay, no waiting. Let's do something else. Recruit a mercenary army. We're exceeding the limit a bit, but... I have plenty of money. And we attack Saxony and land shut. These are the two largest countries and we conquer them all. Who said armies need morale? They manage without it. So let's direct our forces to capture the fortress. I just have too few cannons. Now we storm, storm. Meanwhile, we prepare claims on additional states. Oh no, I forgot about Chile. We shatter the last army of our adversary, capture the final fortress finally take their last provinces. This means we now have quite a lot, but ahead lies an all-in type of war. It'll either work or not. I just had to hand over part of the conquered provinces to Brandenburg. No one said I had to have neat borders. The list of our opponents is currently very long, but my two allies will assist me. But why haven't these countries joined the war? Hello. Okay, after a moment, it's better. They seem to be calling each other to war. It doesn't change the fact that I'll have to fight some battles here to decimate their army before we can calmly proceed to conquer the fortresses. However, let's first focus on the countries from which I don't want anything in this war, like Liege. The Ottoman Empire turns out to be a valuable ally waging its own war. Its armies are in the Caucasus. 
See how many German principalities I'm fighting. Practically half my country. Here, I'm having a bit of fun. I move my army between three, four fortresses and decimate the smaller armies of my adversaries. Every time. They don't even win with their rebels too much. Hey, this is almost their entire army. As my conscripts are running out, I might soon be forced to switch entirely to mercenaries, but practically we've inflicted twice the losses on the enemy than we've suffered ourselves. So things are going very well. Although my country is starting to feel the strain of constant warfare, but I don't give up. I sent claims to more countries. Yes, my allies. Finally, the Ottoman Empire has finished its foolish wars. Maybe they'll come to my aid. The last armies of my adversaries. Look how colorful it is here. Really, these are their last troops. We don't have that much more to conquer. Seriously, most of the enemy's fortresses have fallen. Four, five, six fortresses left to capture. Quite a lot, and time is running out. Why isn't the Ottoman Empire handing over those provinces to me? Hey, I'm getting a bit worried. If they don't give me those two provinces, I might just cry. They seem to want them for some reason. How come? Why do they want those provinces? What happened here? Okay, this means we need to save a lot of administrative points right now. A lot of them. Let's withdraw all diplomats, as we need them for peace negotiations. With all these countries, as soon as possible... There, the war is behind us, but unfortunately, we'll have to violate the truce. I couldn't conquer those two provinces. Here, unfortunately, I accidentally got a vassal. But more importantly, at this moment, we become the Czech Empire. In reality, it doesn't give me much. There, we have more territory to conquer and a lot of rebellions. By the way, we literally dismantled the empire. Honestly, we can't survive something like this. Not now. It should be a maximum of 100% here, so I'm exceeding that nearly five times. Okay, I know it looks bad, but I had to hand over these territories to my vassals, otherwise I would have exploded. Cause rebellions, I also raised some forts. I had almost 40, now 16. This will be very bad, very. So for now, I'll leave these two wars for the end and let's focus on Poland. We're missing three provinces from them and let's be clear, what I'm about to do should never be done, ever, just never. Because now we're losing a lot of stability within our country and it will literally anger all our neighbors. All of them. Waging war before the truce expires is one of the worst things we can do in this game. With my armies, I move on the fortresses in Poznan, Krakow and Warsaw. It was unavoidable. A coalition forms against me. Even Moscow is in the coalition. No, the only good thing is that Sweden will now be free and will join the coalition against me separately. But we have a bit of luck. Ottoman and Mamluk Sultanate are at war. The Sultanate is already after one lost war, but maybe we can seize that one province from him. If my country doesn't fall apart from rebellions? Okay, I have to hurry. We take all the provinces we need and some money. It was a very quick war. We retreat, retreat. Let's clear those rebellions in the south. And we betray the Ottoman Empire. Will I manage to win this war? Wow, I can restore Catholicism in my country. No, but honestly, this is the first time I've seen this event. Storm the fortresses. Our last opponents don't even flee anymore. Yes, we're magnificent, truly. We're approaching the Ottoman capital. Storm it. Let's also storm the last capital here. Time is running out. Half a year left. Quickly, let's capture a few more provinces that I can afford here. Yes, I'm sending artillery separately. Although, no, let's leave them behind to get a few extra war score points. The Ottomans still don't want to agree to peace. It's yellow. We have it. We have it. The last province. Check it quickly. But I don't see anything. I'm curious if these checks would survive another 50 years. Let's check it. 1000 likes and I'll record another episode. Although it will be a slaughter. Almost the same as in this episode. Where to create an empire that is a secret path for Byzantium. I literally had to find myself on the edge of destruction. 